And we're going to end today's show looking at the other decision the Supreme Court is issuing today to decide the fate of President Biden's student debt relief plan. We're joined by David Dayan, executive director, executive editor of The American Prospect, where he has a piece headlined, The Student Loan Case's Unwilling Participant. David, coming out of what we just heard with Melissa around the gay, the fake gay marriage website, uh, talk about what you found in this other Supreme Court case. Yeah, it's a remarkable amount of similarity here, really. Uh, so, in the student loan case, uh, the key issue is standing. Is someone injured by the fact that people are getting uh, this debt relief from the government on their student loans? And the state of Missouri, uh, along with several other states, brought uh, this this lawsuit, and they they claim that uh, because there's a thing called the Missouri Higher Education Loan Authority, which is a servicer, they they do the day to day operations on the loans, uh, that because they will be harmed allegedly, actually they won't be harmed, but because they will allegedly be harmed by losing. Uh, a, a number of uh, student loans to service, then uh, because they owe the state of Missouri money, they might not be able to pay it back. And uh, there are just enormous amounts of reasons why this is problematic. First of all, uh, the loan fund that uh, allegedly the uh, Missouri Higher Education Loan Authority won't be able to pay back the state of Missouri, they haven't made a payment on it in the last 15 years. And internal documents show that they have no intention of paying into this fund. Uh, the second thing is uh, internal emails have shown that the Missouri Higher Education Loan Authority had nothing to do with this case, didn't file it, didn't solicit it, uh, didn't know it was happening, and didn't know they were being used as a substitute for standing for the state of Missouri uh, until they read about it in news reports. And there are internal emails between employees of Mohela saying, we were opposed to this move, but we couldn't do anything about it. The Missouri State Attorney General needed to claim that our borrowers were harmed uh, so that uh, they could have standing in the case. So, uh, you know, a, a real similarity of uh, we, we talk about the Supreme Court's corruption uh, in terms of, you know, going on junkets and things like this. But, uh, I mean, maybe a deeper corruption is the fact that they seem to not check the basic facts in these, in these various cases, and they're ruling on things that uh, uh, aren't, aren't legitimate in some way. How are these not being fact-checked? <laughs> I mean, uh, it, it really— Talk it, about how you found gets, it. Uh, Talk about how you well, found uh, it. Well, it, it was through state sunshine laws. Uh, uh, the Missouri Higher Education Loan Authority. It's called Mohela. Sort of Mohela is sort of a, a, a state instrumentality, and and they, uh, in fact, the only way that the state of Missouri could get information from Mohela is that they had to use state sunshine laws to extract that information. And uh, so uh, advocates at the Student Borrower Protection Center did the same thing, looking up whether they were talking about this case. And they found this tranche of emails uh, that shows that they had nothing to do about it. And in one case, uh, one employee uh, asks, you know, are we involved in this case? Are we the bad guys? Is, is the direct quote uh, that uh, the Mahela employee makes. So. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's 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 a situation where uh, by the time it gets to the Supreme Court, uh, they 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 sort of assume facts, as as Melissa said, they assume the facts as as legitimate. Uh, but in this case, you know, if if the court in fact rules to deny 43 million borrowers uh, reductions in their loan balances, they'll be doing it based on a standing argument on behalf of a plaintiff that was a complete unwilling participant in this case. And if the court does rule that way, can President Biden uh, still cancel student debt? A lot of uh, advocacy groups say that uh, the president could use other means. Right now, they are using the authority granted under something called the HEROES Act. Uh, which allows them in the cases of, of emergency like the pandemic to ensure that borrowers aren't made worse uh, by those those uh, that situation. 
Uh, they could also use the 1965 Higher Education Act uh, and its Compromise and Settlement Authority to uh, reduce loan balances. Uh, it certainly remains to be seen if uh, the Supreme Court sort of slaps down the president, whether uh, he would be willing uh, to use another authority to uh, try to do it uh, in, in a different way. David Dayen, before we end the show, I want to ask you about another SCOTUS point. And for people who are not familiar, SCOTUS is Supreme Court of the United States. As we reported today in headlines, the wife of Supreme Court Justice Samuel Alito leased land to a fossil fuel company for oil and gas exploration around the same time the firm stood to benefit from a major environmental case before the high court. The Intercept has just reported that Justice Alito did not recuse himself from the case, even though his family stood to profit from the outcome. And he ended up writing the five to four majority opinion in Sackett versus Environmental Protection Agency, which gutted protections for U.S. wetlands under the Clean Water Act. At the time, his wife, Martha Ann Baumgartner Alito, had an agreement with the firm Citizens Energy to earn revenue from any oil and gas produced on her land in Oklahoma, which she inherited from her father. And, of course, this following the bombshell report in ProPublica that found that Justice Alito took this undisclosed luxury fishing vacation with Republican megadonor Paul Singer in 2000. 2008, then later ruled in Singer's favor in several cases. Singer, a major donor to the Manhattan Institute, the Republican think tank that supports blocking student debt relief. Members of the Debt Collective demanding Alito recuse himself from today's Supreme Court ruling on President Biden's plan to give 40 million student borrowers up to $20,000 each in debt relief. Your response to these latest revelations, which, of course, uh, follow the revelations uh, around Clarence Thomas and his relationship with the billionaire donor Harlan Crow? Well, I mean, the fact is that the Supreme Court is really a, a, a rogue institution. It, it's, it's an example of self-regulation. Uh, uh, justices decide on their own whether or not to recuse. Uh, the documents that they file, uh, while journalists can can scrutinize those documents and and maybe find other cases where they didn't they didn't disclose certain gifts or other other uh, uh, personal uh, financial uh, windfalls. Uh, it, there's basically no sanction for it. These are lifetime appointments. I mean, this this is what arrogance looks like in uh, in 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 uh, manifested form. And uh, there's there's nothing much that uh, the public can do about it except bring pressure to bear. Uh, and I think that some of the rulings that we've seen this year, which have been a little more moderate, uh, could be a result of the legitimate sea crisis sort of at the at the heart of the Supreme Court. And it's good that uh, journalists and and other people are paying more attention to uh, this circumstance. But it's it's really frustrating. Well, of course, we'll continue to follow all of these issues. David Dayen, executive editor of The American Prospect, his piece will link to the student loan case's unwilling participant. Tune in Monday and Tuesday to Democracy Now!'s holiday specials. On Monday, we'll be bringing you the voice of the late, great Daniel Ellsberg, the whistleblower. And on Tuesday, we'll bring you James Earl Jones reading Frederick Douglass's What to the Slave is Your Fourth of July and other voices of a people's history of the United States. Happy birthday to Isis Phillips. Democracy Now! is produced with Renee Feltz, Mike Burke, Dina Guzder, Messiah Rhodes, Nermeen Sheikh, Maria Tarasena, Tammy Warnock, Trina Nadura, Sam Alkoff, Tamari Astudio, John Hamilton, Robbie Karen, Hani Masood, and Sanji Lopez. Our executive director is Julie Crosby. Special thanks to Becca Staley, John Randolph, Paul Powell, Mike DeFilippo, McGinley, Gary Hugh Grant, Dennis Moynihan, David Prude. I'm Amy Goodman. Thanks for joining us.